Hi everyone and welcome to Squirrel Pie Productions. My name is Tommy. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Dynamite Trujillo. Welcome to episode 89 of my podcast. Thank you so much for being here. If you are a new viewer, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, a big welcome back. Today is a really sunny and crispy and chilly Friday in January here on the Northern California coast where I'm coming to you from. Happy January. Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, I really like January. I feel like for me personally, the year kind of peaks, while I love all of the seasons a lot, the year kind of peaks at like mid to late summer for me. It's just a really neat time. I feel like it's at like the peak of the year. And so when January hits again, I feel like it's a lead up to that. And then once late summer hits and ends, it's kind of like a, so I feel, <laughs> I feel like January is kind of like resetting my like lead up into summer, so I'm excited. I love January. It's a great month. We have show notes for this episode. <laughs> they can be found in the description box below. It's where you'll find links to everything I talk about in this week's episode. I will also link to the Ravelry group and to my yarn shop, Moonstone Dye Works. And things like that. So check that out if you're interested in anything I talk about here today. Um, let's get started with make along winners. So for the past, I think like three months, I was running the flashy make along where you uh, could make along with us anything that is flashy or showy or, you know, sparkly and hoodly hoody. So I have chosen a couple of winners via random number generator. The first winner is from Instagram from using the hashtag FlashyMAL. And the second winner is from the Ravelry FO thread. So I've already drawn the winners. They are written here in my show notes. Um, and the Instagram winner is going to get two patterns from Yarnia Designs. She so generously donated these patterns to the podcast. Uh, the Enchanted Frond and the acorn hat. So the Instagram winner will be getting both of those lovely patterns. And that winner is Inflatable Date, who is Maves. Congratulations, Maves. And Maves made this really cool thing, what's it called, the Havana shawl, and it's mosaic crochet. Super cool, super flashy. So congratulations, Maves. Get in contact with me and let me know your Ravelry username, and I will have those patterns sent off to you. And then the Ravelry winner uh, was post number 14, Nine Crafty 11, who is my friend Julia. Congratulations, Julia. Uh, Julia made a few things for the make along. And one of them, the one that won, was this a V back tee, which was really, really cool. And so, congratulations. You have won this skein of Moonstone Dyeworks yarn in a very special, one-of-a-kind, never-to-be-dyed-again colorway. So congratulations, Julia. I am also going to include this adorable astronaut cat sticker, just for you. So congratulations to the winners. Uh, I hope you all had a really great time participating in the make-along. Thank you for those of you who did participate. I had such a good time following along with everybody who participated in the make-along, and you guys just made some really great stuff. Uh, I unfortunately did not finish my flashy make along project, but that's okay. I started the Arachna Pullover by Andy Satterland, which is a great pattern. Uh, it's a top down yoke, color work yoke with spider webs on the yoke. And uh, it just ended up not working out well for me. I think, you know, with the yarn I used, the size I picked, uh, it just didn't turn out how I was wanting it to turn out, so I abandoned it, but it is still sitting unfinished in a project bag, so I can go back to it if I choose to. We will see. <laughs> um, so, that make-along has come to an end. I have uh, gears turning for my next make-along that I will probably talk about next time. But for now, moving on to what I'm wearing. I'm wearing my very favorite probably garment I've ever knit. Uh, it is the Even Flow Cardigan by Hohi Locatelli. Uh, it's a pretty long open front cardigan with this rolled neck band that I really like. It fits really well. I love this pattern so much. 
and I knit it using Blue Moon Fiber Arts Socks That Rock Medium Weight in the Bittersweet colorway. I just love this sweater. It's the best. Okay. Moving on to finished objects, I have one finished object this time, and it's something you haven't seen in a little while because I uh, put it down for a little while, forgot about it for a little while, and then picked it back up, and I finished it in, like, no time. So these are my finished socks. These are the Lynn Socks by Don Henderson. Here's this one, and then the other one is here. And this is knit out of Knox Yarn Co. in the Mars Sock Base in the Bifrost colorway. And this is such an awesome pattern. So it's a shorty sock, it's top down. And it's got this like shell detail on, as the cuff. And then a heel flap and gusset and ribbing down the top of the foot. Uh, I did change the pattern a little bit because it calls for twisted ribbing. So in the pattern, the detail on the shells and the ribbing down the whole top of the foot is twisted rib. And I changed it to just be regular knit pearl rib. Um, and that's just because I don't like twisted rib. <laughs> I just don't love it. So whenever twisted rib is called for in anything, I always just change it to regular rib because I don't love twisted rib. It's just not me. But I love how these socks came out. This is the first pair of shorty adult size socks that I've ever knit. And I love wearing them. I refrained from knitting shorty socks for myself for a long time because I thought I wouldn't like wearing them. But I love these. I love the way they fit. Um, I'm so happy I made these. The yarn's really beautiful. I love this yarn. I also used this yarn when I knit my Ripple Bralette by Jessie Mae Martinson. Um, and I still have a little bit left over. So one skein of yarn uh, I got two projects out of, which is awesome. And then I'll be able to put the rest of it into like a crochet, my granny stripe crochet blanket or something. And these socks were super quick. Like I said, the second one, I had knit the first one and then got second sock syndrome. That's what happened. I knit the first one and then didn't even cast on the second one for a while. But once I cast it on it, I, I was finished with the second sock in like a day and a half. So uh, it's an awesome pattern. Check it out if you are into shorty socks with just a little bit of interest, but still super easy. And they've got a wedge toe, plain old regular wedge toe. And they fit really great. Uh, there are size options in the pattern. I think, I can't remember. It comes in different sizes. I can't remember how many different sizes. I did a 64 stitch count size. And I knit them on a size US zero, which is my standard for sock knitting these days. Okay, that's my only FO. Moving on to works in progress. I have started a new project. It is living in my Woolen Vine Yarns Neon Cats bag. I started another pair of socks. Uh, so here they are so far. This is a plain stockinette sock. I'm not doing anything on these. It is just stockinette and ribbing. Uh, the yarn that I'm using is this. It is Two Guys Yarn Company in the standard Tweety Toes is the base. And the colorway is Blue Curacao. I got this yarn at Stitches West um, a while ago. Ooh. And in my project bag, I found my chapstick and my very favorite, like, lipstick-ish stuff that I thought I lost. But it turns out it was just in my project bag, if you're interested. <laughs> H-A-A-R-T, this heart, like, it's like... It's not lipstick, it's more, and it's not lip gloss, it's more like a lip tint, maybe? It's like a peachy color. It is, I think it's in Korean, so I don't know what colorway it is. But I love this so much. <laughs> uh, so that's nice that I found those. But I cast this on for my husband, Colin, for a Christmas present. Christmas has now come and gone, and this is how much I have. <laughs> So uh, I gave these to him as a whip, 
pretty much exactly where they are now because I have not been working on them that much. I probably cast them on a few days before Christmas when I decided to actually do this as a Christmas present and uh, didn't get very far. But I'm knitting these on a size US zero. I'm doing a 72 stitch count for him and two by two ribbing on the cuff. It's a top down sock. I used the German twisted cast on to start and now I'm on to the stock in it. And I'm using a tweed yarn, which I don't often use. Uh, I don't think I have ever used like an indie dyed tweed superwash yarn before. And I really like it. That's not true actually. Well, I've used Knit Picks like Stroll Tweed for his first pair of socks that I knit him. And it's really nice. It's like this cool Robin's Egg blue colorway and I love the tweed. It's like black, it's like neutral tweed. So it's got blacks and browns and creams and stuff like that in it and I think it looks really good. So I'm working on that. That is probably gonna be a pretty slow project because they're a little boring, <laughs> but I will get them done. It might take me till next year at Christmas. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, my next work in progress is living in my Sugar Tots box bag. I picked back up on my mittens. So a couple episodes ago, I had started the Alice mittens by Diana Walla. And I got the first mitten done. And I really, really love how it looks. So the yarn that I'm using is Farmer's Daughter Fibers in the Pishkun base. And it's 100% Montana and Wyoming Rambouillet. It's a DK weight yarn and it's the Elk Antler and Eagle Eye colorway. I think that's El Elk Antler and that's Eagle Eye. And I got these two skeins of yarn also at Stitches West. Uh, this one I got at Stitches West 2019. And I think this is the last of my Stitches West 2019 stash. And I believe, not positive, but I believe the Two Guys Yarn Company might be the last of my overall ever Stitches stashes. So that's super exciting. I don't know why I think it's really important, but <laughs> it makes me really happy whenever I use up my Stitches yarn because Stitches is the only fiber event that I ever really go to. It's the only big fiber festival that I've ever been to and I go almost every year. So it always makes me really happy when I use up the yarn I buy from there. And I think this yarn is really beautiful. It's a non-superwash 100% wool. I think these two colorways look so good together. I love this aesthetic so much. To me, this is very thrift store. <laughs> I really love it. Uh, the I did change the cuff. The pattern calls for, I think what's more of a traditional style cuff where it is like almost a lace or a, a chevron kind of thing on the cuff, but I just did two by two ribbing instead. Uh, I did alternate the colors like it calls for though. And then I just went straight into the pattern. The other thing that I modified is that I went down a needle size. So the sizing for these was a little bit bigger than my hand. Uh, I think it comes in two sizes. I knit the smallest size, but the smallest size still is gonna be a little bit too big for my hand. Uh, and I know that that's kind of typical, that mittens fit a little loosely, but I like stuff like this kind of snug. So I went down needle size and they fit really, really great. They are very fitted. My middle finger's right here, so it's right at the end. But I like that, I like how that feels. So it worked out really good. And I still have to do the thumb. And then the second one, I am this far along. So, about here. I gotta be honest, knitting, <laughs> knitting color work mittens isn't my very favorite thing in the world to do. I don't know why, something about it, it's just, it feels a little like, like a chore. <laughs> but I'm getting through it, I'm, I'm, I'm it goes by really fast. So it's like once I sit down and do it, it's pretty quick and it's really not like, it's not like I dislike it. It's just not my favorite thing in the whole entire world to knit. So I'm looking forward to being finished with them. <laughs> but I'm really excited about being able to wear them because they're beautiful. 
super beautiful. I love them. So I said I went down a needle size. That means I'm doing the main mitten section on a US size four. I'm using my Look at Interchangeable Needles. And that's pretty much them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very cozy. Okay. My next project that I've been working on, uh, I've been slacking on it a little bit, but it is my uh, sweater design. Uh, so I am designing a sweater out of Moonstone Dye Works yarn in the Gemini colorway, and I'm holding two different yarns together. I'm doing a mohair lace weight, silk mohair lace weight held together with a merino single fingering weight in the gem, both are in the Gemini colorway. So I'm kind of referring to this as my Gemini pullover, and here's what I have so far. So last time you saw it, I had the body finished, and now I have this much of the first sleeve. I'm on Sleeve Island. I'm super on Sleeve Island. <laughs> uh, but I really like how it's coming out. Uh, it's a top-down raglan v-neck pullover with just stockinette and one by one ribbing at the bottom. It's gonna have long sleeves. Hopefully I can get pretty long sleeves out of my yarn. Uh, I'm on the second skein of each yarn and I'm hoping to use up as much as I can or the rest of or whatever the current skeins and not break into a third skein of each. Uh, and then it's pretty basic and pretty simple. There is a little bit of waist shaping. It's pretty subtle waist shaping though. And I'm knitting this on a USA 6 needle. Um, and love it. Love the fabric. I love how it feels. I think I'm really gonna like wearing it. I did it a little on the longer side and it's coming along really nicely. It's really simple and easy and mindless, but something about sleeves, you guys. You know, right? I don't know. Something about sleeves. It's just like... <laughs> so that is where I'm at with the Gemini pullover. But I do love it. Quite a lot. The last thing that I have been working on is something that I kind of was obsessively working on for a few days. I really am enjoying this project right now. It is a crochet project. It is getting way too big for its that squirrel bag. I can't even zip it closed anymore. Uh, but it is my granny stripe crochet blanket that I'm making out of DK weight yarn for my daughter Lucy. And here's what it looks like so far. So it's, it's a scrappy blanket in terms of I'm using different yarns, but I'm not using, I'm not all just using scraps. I'm using like a whole skinny yarn and then the next whole skein of a different colorway. I'm using all Moonstone Dye Works yarn. Um, there are some scraps in here, so you'll see some smaller stripes. Right now I am using my Christmas colorway from 2019, which is called Pine Cones and Holly Berries. And that is what you see on the top here. And then this is Decaying Opulence. This one is my Halloween color from 2018, which is called Graveyard. This is Belladonna. This is Stardust and Chiffon. And then this tiny little stripe in here is Magical Creatures. So I'm kind of trying to stay in like the pinks and purples kind of palette, but we'll see. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing next after I run out of pine cones and holly berries. I'm about halfway through the skein now, and one full skein gets me about 14 rows. So for example, the Decaying Opulence is one full skein of Decaying Opulence, and this is all my Merino DK Wheat base, which is 100% superwash Merino. And it's just so much fun. I really, really like crocheting in the granny stripe style. It's really fun to me. It's really mindless and really, it's a really nice break from knitting for me if I'm not feeling knitting at the moment or my knitting mojo is feeling a little low. This is what like satisfies 
my urges <laughs> for crafting. <laughs> um, and it's what I really like about this too in opposition as opposed to the more tradition, more common scrappy fingering weight granny stripe crochet blankets is that this goes by a lot quicker and it just, the feeling of the puffiness of the thickness is really satisfying. Um, and you still get to use like cool hand dyed yarns. Uh, I do have a fingering weight version going, but this is definitely the one that I've been going for. Uh, so the hook that I'm using is a five and a half millimeter tulip hook, which are my very favorite crochet hooks. They're the kind of soft, spongy, not spongy. They're the soft handles and it feels really good. And it's pink. Um, and the tutorial that I use to, that I used to start this and I also used to start my other granny stripe is a Coco Bella YouTube tutorial that I will link to in the show notes. I think it's the best tutorial for starting these blankets. Uh, I could not have done it without it. I could not have done it with just straight up written instructions. This tutorial is awesome. And the tutorial uses DK weight yarn. So when you're doing it for the fingering weight, you kind of have to come up with your own numbers. But since this was DK weight, I just used like the starting number of stitches that she used in the tutorial and just totally copied. So that worked out really great. I'm really in love with this project. And I think I'm almost, I'm not almost done, but I'm getting close. I'm definitely more than halfway done. And I don't know exactly how long I'll go, but I think I'm more than halfway done. Are you ready? Are you ready to move on to spinning? I have been spinning. I haven't spun in so long, but I've picked up spinning again and I've had a really, really good time. So, I have a couple of finished skeins of hand spun. Now I have a, lady, a shocked ladybug and I love it so much it's an awesome wheel and it's perfect for me i love my wheel so much uh, and i have a decent sized fiber stash that i like never touch uh, so i pulled this out this is bellwether wool company and it's the base is called treasure it's cormo what i think is cormo cross and firestar so the way they label it is cormo x and Firestar. And so I think that means a Cormo cross with Firestar in it. And Firestar is like kind of like Stellina where it's like the sparkly bits. And this is what it looks like. So it's a two ply. It's worsted spun and it's brown, but if you can see there are multicolor sparkles pretty heavily all throughout this skein. And I think that is really cool. That really appeals to me when it's like a natural, like breed specific, non super wash wool with sparkle in it. <laughs> That's really, really appealing to me. So I was really excited to spin this. I've had it in my stash for a pretty long time. It was four ounces, I got 300 yards. And so I'm thinking it's about a sport weight. Sport weight? DK maybe, is that a DK? 300? Heavy sport. Uh, and I don't have a terribly controlled method of spinning. I typically do a lot of combination, short forward, short backward draft, drafting techniques interspersed with woolen methods. It depends on what my hands feel like doing at the moment. So there's a lot going on in here. My hand spuns typically are not very consistent or smooth or... They're pretty hand spun -y, you know what I mean? Um, but I really like how this turned out. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet, but I love it. And then my other hand spun is this crazy madness. So this is Classy Squid Fiber Co. in the Parisian Confectionery Bat. <laughs> uh, and they were mini bats. So this came in a three ounce uh, put up and it came with six little half ounce um, 
They weren't bats, actually. They weren't bats. They were like, I don't know, whatever this is in fiber, <laughs> like all coiled up, like little nests. Uh, and it was really fun to spin. It was really pretty all over the place. So this is what it came in. And it's called Parisian Confectionery, Super Fine Merino Farm Fleece, Polworth Firestar Silk, Faux Cashmere, Mulberry Antessa Silk, Silk Noil, and Angelina. So, that's the label. I got 80 yards, so it's pretty bulky. And it's exactly what I like. It's farm fleece merino mixed with a bunch of super sparkly stuff. Uh, and like I said, it was kind of all over the place to spin. Uh, what ended up happening is I pretty much woolen spun it. So I did a long draw pretty much, but I do a pretty sloppy long draw. Like it's not really, especially with all this stuff in it. Like all of these colored bits are all different fiber from the white bits. So every time, like I would... I would be long drawing and the white, you know, the, the main, the merino would be long drawing and then I'd come to one of these big chunks of like a big purple lock or something and it would just be like, <sighs> and I'd have to like figure out how to deal with it. Uh, but it was really fun to do. It felt really just out of control the whole time I was spinning it and I had totally given into it. I knew that this was not going to be like a I knew it was going to be kind of an out of control kind of spin. And I've never really spun like that before. Uh, so I had a really good time. And like I said, it's a pretty bulky weight yarn. It's got a lot of things going on. The only thing, honestly, that I don't like about it, that I just wish wasn't there, are these. So what are these? I don't know. I assumed they were little cotton pieces. But it doesn't say that there's cotton in here. Maybe it's the faux cashmere? I don't know, but they're like little tiny balls. And they kind of like in the little bat things or in the little nests of roving or whatever, they kind of looked like they were going to spin into it as like cute little tweety things or something. But they just fall right out. I mean, I could, I wonder if you can see it on camera. They come right out. As I'm touching it, like I'm getting them all over me right now. Okay, I'm gonna see if you can see this. Ready? I don't know if you can see that. But every time I do that, it's like stuff just like <laughs> um, So, practically speaking, as much as you can say practically speaking about yarn like this, uh, when I knit this into something, I think these are all just gonna kind of fall out all over the place. So my original intention was to kind of do something for Lucy, but I don't know if that's gonna be realistic. Because I think whatever she wears, whenever she wears whatever I make out of this, she's gonna take it off and just have stuff all over her. You should have seen the floor. You should see me right now, there's stuff all over me. But you should have seen the floor under my spinning wheel and the couch, everything around the spinning wheel after I spun this was just drenched in things, in those little white fuzzy things. Also, the Angelina and Stellina in this are is like nuts. It's like huge. And so there was a bunch of these all over the floor at the vacuum as soon as I was done spinning it. Um, but it's not, like that's not a terrible thing and it's not that surprising either considering like this whole thing. Um, but I really like how it came out. And like I said, it was super fun to spin. It is super puffy and spirally and I love it. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. I, I had intentions of making something for Lucy, but I don't know if I will. So we'll see. But that's my spinning. I've been having so much fun spinning. I even um, bought some stuff because I did not have Classy Squid Fiber Co. in my stash. That came from an order that I ordered um, right before Christmas and that came super fast. Uh, so moving on, two favorites to the things that I have purchased. Um, so I purchased that uh, package of three ounces of fiber from Classy Squid. And I also got this. 
And this I'm really excited about. So this is her After Dark collection. It is After Dark number two, and it's Coriadil, Fine Wolf Fleece, Firestar, Nylon, Mohair, and Sari Silk. Now, this collection is like dark wool blended with other things that are like kind of deeper jewel tones. And each one, they're all numbered, has is like a different color set. And this was the number two, and oh, this is totally right up my alley. I love it so much. It's dark and it's pink and it's deep and it's beautiful. And it's that kind of thing too, where it's like a breed specific kind of natural wool with this running through it. Oh, I haven't opened it. I'm gonna open it right now. And, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <gasps> That's the bat. Ooh, look at that side. It's just so perfect. I love it so much. Um, now I bought three of these bats. Each bat is two ounces. And so I have six ounces of this. And I'm totally copying Gabby of Once Upon a Corgi because she got a few bats from Classy Squid. And it was kind of similar. It was really dark wool with kind of deep colors running through it. I think it was more of like reds and stuff like that. And it was in the Illyrian Wings bats that Classy Squid has. Uh, and she spun, I can't remember if she got three bats or not, but she spun, say she got three. She spun three bats, plied them all into one batch, and she's knitting a sweater out of it. And it's going to be her wedding sweater. Uh, and I really loved that idea. I've been kind of like following along as she's been spinning it and I kind of wanted to copy her so I did. <laughs> I found this fiber on her website and I thought it was perfect so I got what to me I think could be a sweater quantity for like maybe like a cropped sweater um, because it's six ounces it's not that much uh, but I think I could spin this into a smaller sweater quantity for like a crop sweater. So these are my three. And I'm really, really stoked on this. I kind of want to get this on the wheel immediately. So we'll see how long it takes me to do it. Uh, I don't have any plans in terms of like gauge or thickness or anything like that. Most likely what I will do just because it's kind of my default is to do a two ply and see what kind of weight I get and then pick a sweater based on that. I'm assuming I'll get like a sport weight. That's kind of my default is a two ply sport weight. Sport DK. So the other thing that I purchased is a skein of yarn from Once Upon a Corky. <laughs> um, and it is this. So she put up some mystery skeins in her shop and I followed along with her Vlogmas and that's how I found out about it. And so I purchased a mystery skein and it came wrapped up in Christmas wrapping. And I think I got it a couple days before Christmas. So I put it under my Christmas tree and I opened it on Christmas morning and it was so much fun. And this is what I got. So it's a mohair silk lace weight, and it's in the previous yarn engagement colorway, and it is perfect. This colorway could not have been more perfectly suited to me. It's perfect. Colin saw it, and he's like, that looks like something you would dye. And I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like pinks and purples and browns and like pops of like these dingy greens that I love. I love it so much. It is wonderful and I'm super, super happy I got it. Okay, that's it. That's all my stuff. Oh, also, when I ordered from Classy Squid, she sent me this little sample that I may or may not spin up on a drop spindle. I haven't decided yet. Okay, I will leave you there. I hope you're all having such a good January. Also, I hope you had a really great holiday, holiday season, December. It is now officially full-blown winter, so I hope that's awesome for you. And if you enjoyed the video, please do feel free to like and subscribe. 
and I will talk to you next week. Have fun and stay awesome. Bye.